too costly. Oh, that's better. Into the pocket from Deandra. <laughs> Trying to get the crowd on side. No problem at all. Yeah, great start from D. Flash the pocket. Takes a strike. Looks down there. Uh, very pleased. Nice smooth style. Great follow through. And absolutely rips the rack. Oh, I like that one. Yeah, come on, give me some more of that support she's asking. Good work from Deandra. Inducted into the Bowling Hall of Fame a couple of years ago. And talking of which, we've got another inductee who's just joined us in the commentary booth, uh, Zara Glover of England. We'll have a little chat to her in a minute as Stu hits another strike. So a double for Williams to get this second game underway. And just a strike to open up, my apologies. Hi, oh, Zara, how's it going? Good, thank you. <laughs> tough pressure out there, isn't it, for these guys? Yeah, it's a tough game. Stu had a little glitch in that 10th frame, so made it a bit closer. Now, you wouldn't want to ask a... Well, we don't want to ask a lady a personal question as you come into the booth, but um, we were just debating who's going to be older because uh, Deandra, at the moment, is the youngest ever inductee into the Hall of Fame, and she was 25. That's right. That was a few years ago now, though. I'm not disclosing any numbers. <laughs> She'll kill me, but... <laughs> Simon, I wasn't going to go there, but... Uh, <laughs> your, well, you size, your size 12 boot really got into there as well. Yeah. So you got to do it. You've I got think deandra has got a couple of years' experience on Stu. She's a couple of years older. Yeah, she's... She's just used that experience very well in this match. She's been in trouble on a couple of occasions, but she's made the adjustment. But, Zara, have you found these problems when you're at the World Temping Masters? She's just not quite the, got the speed in the revs to get through the oil when the lane condition changes. Exactly. I mean, last year I played uh, Jason... No, I've played Jason Belmonte the last couple of years, and you can see the difference in the power, the rev rate. It really affected the lane conditions for me, made the lanes change a lot faster. So it made a big difference. I had a good look for maybe eight frames, and then he just burnt up the lane, and he had the whole lane, and I was really struggling. So it does make a big difference. Giandra's handling it well at the moment, and that little gesture to the crowd after the first frame has just got them on side now. Yeah, well, she's just doubled, and uh, as I say, the Moose Patrol's out, and they've really picked up on uh, D's side, and she's acknowledged that. And uh, oh. Stuart's had a full start. I think one of the cameramen... Uh, just caught his eye down there on the left-hand side next to the ball, ball return. So he's going to regroup, rethink. He's got a 39-pin lead from the first uh, game. Uh, but he's staying with DeAndre, so he needs to double here. Oh, Brooklyn. Oh, Brooklyn indeed, but he'll take it, he'll take it. <laughs> I hazard to say that this is the uh, world-ranking Masters uh, champion. Call him Brooklyn, straight off his hand. Anything to say about that, Zara? Oh, it doesn't need any words. He knew it was a bad shot from the beginning, so he's just <laughs> taking advantage of it. <laughs> great, great body language there from uh, Stu. He was a very lucky man, and he knows it. So it's all square, two, uh, two strikes each. A lot of work to be done in this match at the moment. In this very, very close arena, that's the point of the World Tempin Masters. It is up close and personal in terms of the crowd getting in involved with the matches and that's what makes this event so special but Zara when you're up there for the first time or even the second time you're so aware of the camera you're so aware of the audience aren't you yeah definitely they're they're so close by and with only being one lane as well it's even more narrow it's slightest movement and it really catches your eye so it's good Stu stopped and came back and regrouped it you don't want to make a bad shot that's it's such a short format or hit one of the cameramen with a ball. Straight through the head pin. He nearly got the carry, though. Nearly got the 4-9 split. High through the head pin, Stuart Williams, and was very fortunate to trip that 4-pin. 9-pin stand, so it's a single-pin spare, hopefully. Just finishing heavy. Cass, this isn't over, is it? It's not. <laughs> Stuart nearly went over the line again there for a foul. He's having a bit of trouble. He's... Uh, Rushing it a bit now, trying to get this game over. He wants the victory. But uh, Dee's perfect through three, so this will be very, very interesting. Yeah, there it was. <laughs> he just about got his toe back behind the line. Quick thinking from Stuart Williams. Nine strikes, three spares and an open frame. That's pretty much past stuff from him. Of course, you know what, Simon, the, the winner of this match... <laughs> meets Oscar Palermo in the quarterfinals. 
Oh dear. And if Palermo bowls anything like his first round match against Michael Schmidt, whoever gets through to the quarter final to face him isn't going to have much lane left to work with. Yeah, the temper defies uh, Deandra there. She was just, uh, she'd hit three strikes in a row. Seemed as though she'd conquered the carry problem, but not to be in frame number four. It's been a great atmosphere, isn't it, so far, Zara? What, what a response from the crowd to the players. It's been brilliant. We've had a real big crowd since the first thing yesterday, so it's excellent. Real, real good crowd here in Barnsley. They, they always support the event really well, so... And as soon as the players involve themselves with the crowd, they, they immediately respond and get on side. We had a tremendous finish to the Palermo-Schmidt match. I mean, that was over three or four frames out from the end, and I've never heard anything like it. No, it was great. They were doing some good showmanship. It's great. Real good entertainment. Massive adjustment there from Stuart, but he's got it wrong, Zara. Looks like he's having trouble with those approaches. We had a few people earlier on having problems, but he's really finding them strange. There's a little bit of rivalry going on here with Deandra and him. It's not Stu's favourite thing to bowl against women. I've experienced that in the past. He looks a little bit edgy. Well played. That's a good spare from uh, Stuart. Quick bit of repair work there. It take, takes a bit of time for these lanes to bed in. I'm just wondering if Stuart puts up, up some uh, lane oil on his shoe from that uh, last frame. When his foot went over the line, he may have dragged that back on the approach and could be suffering with it. Uh, the temperature in the building has a real effect on the on the approaches, and it? it's been quite cold here in Barnsley, so I think it's having a big effect on the the friction of the surface. Yeah, it's cold all around the lane, and then when the television light goes on, it or lights go on, it heats it up. But of course, overnight, the lane is going to be at uh, less than room temperature. Oh, Deandra, that wasn't too bad from her. She would have expected to maybe pick up the strike. Hitting the uh, pocket re reasonably consistently now, and unfortunately, the, the carry contest has come into play. She's just not making this, carrying this 10 pin out now. Just a fraction light in the pocket. Soft tent standing there. And she'll be getting slightly frustrated as well. She knows she's playing well, better in this second game. Not getting the maximum result, though. That's the difference with Stu, with the higher rev rate, he can create a lot more angle into the pocket and get out these corner pins a bit easier. That's, that's the struggle she seems to be having. Yeah, well spotted, Zara. Now, Stuart Williams is not having it all his own way, so a spare in frame three and four. But he's been, he's been uncomfortable for the last ten minutes out there. That's a bit smoother. Oh, no, he's left another one. Didn't seem as though he got that off his hand very much, as uh, Chris Bond says. He didn't get a handful there. <laughs> Came off a lot straighter, not so much uh, rotation on it. Just didn't get the reaction in the back end. Just made the hairpin. Fortunate just to leave the two-pin standing, which should be a straightforward spare for Stuart. Mm, good work. But this game's not dead yet. And uh, Tiandra Aspadi is going to have to get into that strike zone if she's going to pull back some of those pins from Stuart Williams. It's Stuart still in control for the moment, but Tiandra's still there. Welcome back to the Masters. It's Asbati against Williams for a place in the quarter-finals. Aspati then has to start striking from here. And just a pause from her. What's, uh, what's happening here? Uh, she's going to put some tape in, uh, in the thumb hole on the ball by the look of it. Well, interesting time to decide to do that, but there we go. Yeah. Uh, just uh, make sure the thumb is very comfort comfortable in that uh, thumb hole. It needs to be snug. Don't need any movement in there at all. That's what causes that popping noise that you sometimes hear as the fingers, and particularly the thumb, come out of the ball. Heard it then. Through the head pin, and Zara, if she just made that tape replacement earlier and had it not part of her routine, that would surely have been better. Yeah, maybe it just shook her up a little bit. I don't know. So the thumb hole's nice and snug. It keeps her swing looser and hopefully makes her feel more relaxed, but I don't know. That wasn't a very good shot.
unfortunately, an open frame for Zara, for uh, Deandra. Sorry, Zara. <laughs> That's all right. <laughs> you, you were pulling a face there after that last ball, Zara. Was she just having a, a bit of an experiment? I don't know. It was interesting. I would have thought oh, she would have gone for the count and gone for the two pins because... I mean, you never know in this short format, one pin can make all the difference. So maybe she was just making herself feel more comfortable if we're going for a 10 pin, I don't know. Well, they're all, all being awfully polite out there, aren't they, Cass? Because every time one of them hands, uh, yeah. hands it over to the other or opens the door for the other, the other one says, no, no, please, after you. Well, absolutely, uh, Stu's hit the pocket here and left a 17. Yeah, that's after me saying about him creating more angles. That's where the ball's gone too long and come into the into the pocket at too much angle, then it leaves the 7-10 split, so <laughs> maybe the creating of an angle isn't such a good thing all the time. Well, Williams has given us Buddy a chance, she hasn't taken it, and vice versa. There could be some more drama in this match yet. Terrific style, isn't it, from Deandra? It's super to watch. Yeah, she's excellent. The the last few days we've been doing some coaching clinics and she's technically perfect, pretty much. The the stuff she teaches is exactly how she bowls and she's a great ambassador for anyone who want, wants to achieve bowling success. She's the best one to look at. For someone so petite, she creates a lot of power and that's all down to technique. Yeah, it's that uh, great follow-through with the, with the arm and the deep knee bend, steady at the line. And that's just the uh, the basics that you need to uh, get right every single time. This is a big ball for Stuart Williams. He's bowling incredibly fast. And I don't just mean ball speed and revs. He's straight out of his chair and straight onto the lane. Yeah, managed to carry another 10 there, which is uh, bonus time. Yeah, he wasn't over-happy with that shot, he got off his hand, but uh, whether he missed his mark or not, I don't know, but uh, I think he was just saying a few prayers to the bowling gods there, and they answered him with ten. I think he feels that maybe that was the ball that might just have done it, and he can keep his nose in front now. Oh. Oh, that came off the hand, didn't oh, it? She, she didn't it. like that at all. <laughs> Do you think she'd want to take it again? <laughs> I don't think so, not now. <laughs> no, she'll accept that one, I'm sure. Maybe when the ball was halfway down the lane. Well, both players have had their prayers answered by the bowling gods with the last two deliveries. So Williams has got to produce again. Oh, oh straight through the head pin. Yeah, then that's a nasty little leave, I'm afraid. It's the... Uh... 369 and a 10. He's got that sleeper there. He's just checking what he's got on the TV monitor on the screen. That is not an easy spare to pick up. And at this stage of the game, that's the last thing he needs. Mustn't leave it open. And he hasn't. He's absolutely demolished that spare. Yeah, it's a good spare under pressure. He really did need it. And we're down to the foundation frame already. It's frame number nine. We're coming to the end of the match, and uh, it's getting tighter. Well, this is going to be a huge finish to this game. And Deandra Aspadi will... I think she'll be amazed that she's still in with a chance here. This could be a huge ball if she could strike. No. Nearly got the luck, but not quite. Just didn't drive up. Just needed a bit more uh, rotation. Just turn over again into that 1 3 pocket and uh, that 2 2 may well have gone. Have to settle for the spare. Which she does. Yeah. Zara in Deandra's position at the moment, what would you be feeling? Your heart would be going 10 to the dozen. She, I mean, she's well experienced in these situations. She's bowled on TV pretty regularly and um, I mean she won one of the ladies PBA tour stops last year so she's not new to the cameras so hopefully she's feeling confident but it depends what Stu does now I guess yeah this is a really big ball for Stuart now coming up uh, 10 pins here could just about set him up for the victory oh oh he's a lucky boy well God bless, God bless that head pin which was the messenger he's taken the 10 pin away Almost had the 7-10 split standing, as you'll see. Lots of width, just makes the head pin. And there's that messenger. 
Solid seven pin standing on its own. Must make this spare. Oh, oh dear, Stuart, goodness, what mate. are you doing? Well, it's not really the time to be experimenting. No, it's strange. The the first ball was very different. He got he got the ball out to the a lot wider break point. So I don't know if he was expecting that ball to hook as much in the middle of the lane, but that's where the higher volume of oil is, so it was never going to hook that much. I don't should, know. Should he have thrown straight at it, single pin? I always do. A lot less risk, but it's his decision. Absolutely, yeah. Open frame, then, in the foundation frame for Stuart Williams. And it could mean problems for him. That's Batty now. He's back in the hunt. If she hits this pocket now and gets the strike... Oh, she has done. Oh, oh right, dear. This is getting so close to call. So exciting. Well, there's a single digits here, and Diana has the opportunity to make two more strikes. And shoot 213 in this uh, last game. Well, Stuart Williams, who by his own admittance says he talks too much, might just be silenced right now. And Asbati has got her game face back on. She's got a massive chance, Zara. Yeah, and he's handed it straight back to her, so it's all on this ball. The ten pin left standing, and as Batty knows, that that's it. Oh, that is unfortunate, but she's done so well to fight her way back into this game. Yeah, absolutely. How unfortunate that was. That uh, six pin just jumped right round that ten pin. It was a good solid hit, and a single pin spare here will just be a two o three, which unfortunately won't be enough because I think Stewart's just got to make a mark, and it's uh, his match. He said he just got to make a mark. He didn't mark the last frame. Uh, yes, yeah, good point. <laughs> there we go for Asbadi, 393. And that is just not the sort of numbers that you'd expect. And that very talented bowler to turn in. Here comes Williams then for his mark. Oh, my good goodness God, me. What's going on here? Is well, this is unbelievable. Taken six and left the washout which is, a, in theory, a split. Just didn't make it. I don't know what uh, sort of hand he was using there, but... Uh, oh. oh, dear. So that's 169 last game. And the situation is that... Uh, oh, has he won? I'm not sure. Well, it was incredibly close in the end. Uh, waiting for confirmation of the scores. Stuart Williams and Deandre Asbadi. Well, both of them on stage, just trying to figure out who's actually taken that one. And when you're hooked up in the games, are it's not easy to remember no. exactly what you've got. It's five pins. And look at that, wow. the narrowest of margins. Stuart Williams has sneaked it. And that is as close as it gets at the World 10-pin Masters. Stuart Williams of England then nicks it from Deandra Asbati. It's a dramatic game for various reasons. Entertainment from the crowd once again, but it's Stuart Williams that goes through to the quarter-finals. I felt like if I could stand up at the foul line, I was going to throw good shots, and I wasn't doing that very often, so I was, by the end it was getting quite nerve-wracking, and I was glad that she didn't get the double in the tenth frame. Or I'd have been in trouble, I think. It was a close match, Stuart bowled well, and I'm glad that it came down to the 10th frame. And my last two shots I threw uh, were really good. They're, they're everything that I would want them to be. I threw really good shots, I gave myself a chance. One struck, the next didn't, and I left another 10 pin. So if that strikes, then, then I have a chance at, at winning. Well, I'm hoping that's my bad game out of the way and I get away with it and I can improve my performance for when I play Oscar in the next round. I lost, but I can go away feeling like I won because um, all the great fans here make you feel so good. So hopefully I can come back and uh, visit them again because they're all asking me if I'm going to be back, and I don't know. It may not have been a master class in 10 pin, but in terms of sporting drama, it was difficult to beat. One of the closest matches we've seen so far, going all the way down to the wire, Williams scraping through with just five pins the gap. Next up, the highly rated Kirstine Penny as she attempts to become only the third female to enter the record books of the Masters as a champion. But she faces the highly talented Indonesian Ryan Lalisang as they both chase the penultimate quarter-final spot in the PartyCasino.com World 10-Pin Masters.